Hip evasion is the act of using instant turns, misdirection, and confusion to gain a positional advantage on the enemy. It is also useful when you are trying to become evasive, and important when you're trying to put pressure on an enemy ship. The first step to understanding pip evasion is understanding movement relative to an enemy. We can practice this by finding a small rock in the belt around yellow. The goal of this drill is to change directions around the rock. As a visual representation of an enemy ship, we will use the sunny side of the rock as the front of a ship and the dark side of the rock as the back of the ship. My goal is to cause movements that would make it difficult for my opponent to land shots. In the middle, you'll see a guide showing you the inputs that I'm putting into my craft as I do these maneuvers. My left stick will be doing strafes, while my right stick will be controlling pitch and yaw. I will be using pedals to move forward and back as needed, and roll will be on my left hand twist. As I'm bobbing and weaving back and forth over and under the rock, I am not passing the rock. Instead, I am dancing in front of it. I only want to pass when I feel I have an appropriate lead on inertia, and I find a window of opportunity when I can get behind the opponent and get some free shots. We'll talk about inertia a little bit more later on in this video, but now that you've seen the movements, let's look at what it looks like when you're using the pip as a guide to understand your relative motion next to an enemy. If you haven't seen my previous video titled Dancing, I highly recommend you first check that out so that you understand what pip neutralizing is and how pips correlate to movement. Just check the description below and I'll have a playlist linked for you with all my tutorials starting you off with the dancing video. We're going to position a craft in front of the rock we were practicing with, but I'm going to space myself a little bit from the craft to make it easier to see the pip movement. Feel free to slow this video down with the settings available on YouTube on the bottom right cogwheel. I want you to notice that there is no difference between what I was doing earlier with the rock compared to what I'm doing now with my enemy. Again, the point of these drills is to move the pip around erratically, making it difficult for your opponent to get a shot. The further away from the enemy that the pip gets, the more energy I'm going to need to counteract the inertia to move in another direction. You don't want to sit dead middle in neutralized position, as it is an easy way to get shot, but conversely, it becomes more difficult to change directions the further away the pip gets from the center of the ship. This is because the further away the pip is getting from the ship, the faster you're probably traveling, creating more inertia to fight against as you try to redirect the energy. Just remember, you usually want to prioritize the bottom thrusters as they provide the most amount of energy. That said, you can do more advanced maneuvers like actually using your rear engines by turning your ship in the direction that you want to push the pip. Another important feature to understand, neutralizing the pip makes it easier to approach an enemy and makes it easier to be shot. Distancing the pip makes it harder to reach the enemy, but also harder to be shot. The more speed and distance that you have, the more evasive you will be to enemy fire. The pip in this game is not only a way for you to target, but a visual representation of what your craft is doing relative to the enemy ship. This also works in lag pip, but it functions inverted and looks a little bit different. Again, this is covered a little bit more in depth in the dancing tutorial that I've listed before in the description box. I really want you to understand the importance of separating your forward and rear thrust from rear strafes. When you're trying to do maneuvers in Star Citizen, you want to isolate movements. You don't want accidental inputs of strafes or forward and rear thrusts as you're trying to do one or the other. While key bindings vary from person to person and relies a lot on personal preference, the main component you want to look for is the ability to isolate these maneuvers. Before we finish off this video, I want to show you a video where I taught another player how to do these moves. I'm hoping that by watching this final explanation, maybe you can grasp something that you were missing from this video. All right, go ahead, neutralize the pip. Actually, let me do it simpler. Let me stay right there. Okay, neutralize the pip. What did you have to do there? You had a strafe to the right, I think? Left. Left, okay. Now, hold on, don't do it yet. Neutralize the pip. And now I'm pushing into you. See how you have to react to that? Yeah. Because I see where your momentum is going, I can push against your momentum to take it in another direction. And that's, that's what makes high speed not really matter because if we're matched, all I have to do is find for another way to inch closer and closer to you little by little. And this is where, where inertia battles come in. Like when we're like this, this is easy. You don't want to be like here, right? But I'm going to tell you, hey, I'm going this way. And then when you try to get acquisition, I'm going to push another direction and so forth and so forth. And I look for those one types right there. Like I'll, I'll hit you, you get nose, I move. And I keep doing it over and over again. See, and this is where you really get to those high skill PvP matches. That's going to be it for this video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.